In a comedy about the fabric of space, time, and existence, there are bound to be a few loose threads. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 plot holes in Rick and Morty you never noticed. Uh, that's a blips and shits ticket. What? Way to go, Morty. Uh, whatever. Uh, wait, wait, what? All right, come, come on, on, Jerry. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the concepts or plot devices that just don't quite fit together when placed under a little scrutiny. Get ready to drink the Szechuan sauce. Spoilers ahead. Wow, this sauce is f***ing amazing. You said it was promoting a movie? Number 10, Portal Gun Tech. Over the course of the show, the portal guns used by the Ricks have become a big MacGuffin. You want to see my first boner, or should we go straight to the moment I discovered interdimensional travel? A sought-after piece of technology, down-and-out Ricks on the Citadel try to bootleg the portal gun formula. And the big bad of the show, the Galactic Federation wants it too, as proven by their failed interrogation of Rick C-137. Yes, I'd like very much to visit the memory of you inventing your portal gun. Yeah, well, tough titties. But why? In the first episode, we see Rick and Morty entering a Federation spaceport to use a Federation-operated transporter to get back to their own dimension. If the Federation already has such technology, why are they so determined to get the portal gun fluid? Is this what I think it is? Bootleg portal fluid! Number 9. Time travel on the shelf. You guys should really not be touching that stuff, it's beyond your reasoning. Falling into the why even tease it category, we can see from the box in the garage that time travel is something that Rick has toyed with, but it's a concept that is literally shelved. This makes sense from a writing point of view because timey-wimey stuff always quickly devolves into paradoxes. But the fact that it's there means that Rick, who can apparently do anything, has played with the idea but gave it up. Did he accidentally mess up the past? The future? Is it something even Rick can't handle? Just the fact that it's there for the audience to see creates a lot of problems. By the way, that wasn't time travel. There were just a couple pizzas on the counter. I grabbed them. Number 8. Rick Potion Number 9 Cure could you make some sort of chemical thing happen inside of Jessica's mind? You know, so where she falls in love with me and all that sort of thing? You know, like, maybe make some sort of love potion or something? When Morty is a little creep and wants a love potion for Jessica, Rick mixes up some nonsense and BAM! Cronenbergian monsters. What's Rick's follow-up plan? Cut losses and run, of course. But if Rick can peek into other realities and find one where a version of him figured out the cure, couldn't he have just learned how to make the cure and fixed his own world rather than hop an entire dimension? It's probable that Rick just couldn't be bothered, but you'd think that Morty would call him out on it. Instead, it's treated like jumping ship was the only option. What about the reality we left behind? What about the reality where Hitler cured cancer, Morty? The answer is don't think about it. Number 7. Citadel Citizens Morty is 14 years old across all the dimensions and parallel timelines we've seen so far. But on the Citadel, there are Mortys who are cops, club owners, budding politicians slash tyrants, and more. I'm glad to know there's more like me. Oh, there was one. Why do you think that seat was empty? Those things all require training, or at least a little time. So did they start when they were in diapers? And if some Mortys get careers in their preteens, then why is there a Morty school? And what happened to their families? I see it everywhere I go. I see it in our schools, where they teach Mortys we're all the same because they're threatened by what makes us unique. I see it in our streets, where they give guns to Mortys, so we're too busy fighting each other to fight real injustice. And let's not forget Citadel Ricks. Mortys only come from Beths who hooked up with Jerry's because Rick left. If they could leave their families before, why do they stay at the Citadel now at jobs they hate? Uh, where, where am I? A bad place, but you're going to a better one soon. Number 6. Beth's Life when I was a kid, I just told myself that Tommy had gotten lost in the magical realm of Fruity Land. Fruity Land? My make-believe world. I know the name's stupid, but it was so real to me. We get a little glimpse into Beth's childhood and the ABCs of Beth, but that's it. We know, based on the timeline, Rick disappeared when Beth was young, and by 17, she was pregnant with Summer. We don't know anything about her mother, like when Mrs. Sanchez died or if she's actually dead at all. But also, tomorrow is your one-year anniversary back in our lives. There was a fake-out about Rick's original wife and Beth dying, but there are still so many questions. Like, from the Citadel, we can see all the Ricks of the central finite curve had a Beth, or else no Morty, which means they all met and married her mother. So what happened? You'd think Beth would know more, but she seems to be in the dark. Okay, so let me get this straight. For the rest of your lives, no matter how much it hurts you, no matter how much it destroys our children's futures, we're gonna do whatever Rick wants whenever he wants? Yes! yes. Why? Because I don't want him to leave again, you dumb asshole! 
Number five, the Citadel. many Ricks and Mortys in one place, there are a lot of questions. Like, which dimension are they in? How did they extract it from the Federation prison after they collide it? Furthermore, did all these Ricks and Mortys just abandon their own dimensions to live on the Citadel? Good morning, I'm Rick D-716B. And I'm Rick D-716. Must be nice. Rick C-137 lambastes the irony of them forming a government to stay safe from the government. A point that seems legitimate when he points out later that one Morty is enough to keep a Rick hidden. I'm the Rick, and so were the rest of you before you formed this stupid alliance. You wanted to be safe from the government, so you became a stupid government. So really, what is the point of the Citadel at all? We've yet to see any interstellar diplomacy, but maybe it's just because they're all Rick holes. Ricks have a very distinctive and traceable brainwave due to our genius. The best way to hide from an enemy's radar is to stand near someone with complementary brainwaves that make ours invisible. See, w w when a Rick is with a Morty, the genius waves get canceled out by the, uh, <clears throat> Morty waves. Number four, the origins of the Galactic Federation. I don't like it here, Morty. I can't abide bureaucracy. I don't like being told where to go and what to do. I consider it a violation. Did you get those seeds all the way up your butt? Yeah, Rick. The Galactic Federation is, or at least was, a galaxy-spanning government. With roughly 6,048 planets in the Federation, it controls significant portions of the galaxy. It's apparently been doing this for over 850 Glagnars. Um, which sounds like a lot. Although it seems to exist in most dimensions, we don't actually know anything about it. How long will you be visiting Earth? Oh, we live here. We were just off planet for a wedding. How does it function? Why? Do the member planets of the Federation get to vote? Can anyone become a ranking member? Ricks don't like it because they don't like being told what to do. Which also begs the question, why doesn't Rick just go to a dimension where the Federation doesn't exist? One thing still perplexes me. Why would Rick Sanchez turn himself in? Well, I'm just a dumbass bug, but it's possible Rick knew he'd be interrogated at this facility where we not only keep our most wanted, but our most sensitive data. Anyone here with level 9 access could, uh, I don't know, collapse the government? Number 3. Jerry Burry in Morty Night Run, we learn that one enterprising Rick created a daycare for Jerry's. This is a totally unregistered cross-temporal asteroid. Here they can romp and play with other Jerry's. He couldn't be safer. Hey, Morty, hang on to this. That number's your dad. If you lose it, we're not gonna be able to get him back. Rick casually mentions that it's on a cross-temporal asteroid, meaning it is a finite space existing in all dimensions at the same time. So wouldn't this make it the most valuable spot in the galaxy? How do multiple Ricks arrive there, go in, and just walk out the door back into their own reality? Hey, are you the one that left? I get it. It's a, it's a hassle out there. Right? I mean, who needs that? Right? Right? <laughs> Not who needs that? Wouldn't the Galactic Federation be all over that, as you could move between Rick worlds, but also have access to the Sanchez-Smith family super easily? Plot hole aside, we think we need a Siege of Jerry Burry episode. Laser showdown in the ball pit. Marco, <laughs> you guys are enjoying this? Oh Don't God. you feel a little patronized? How so? Jerry! Beth. Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. Aww. I love you, Jerry! Aw, Beth. Number two, time and age. While time travel seems to be off the roster, there is still a lot of chronological manipulation. Whoa. Yeah, e e everything's frozen in time. Yeah, and slow Mobius thinks he's all that. For how long? I don't know. How long do you guys want? A week? A month? In one episode, Rick freezes time for weeks. In another, he and Morty are trapped in a teeny-verse for months, at least as long as it took for Morty to become the leader of the indigenous peoples there. Holy shit, Morty! I haven't seen you in months! With all this, it makes you wonder how old Morty is now. Furthermore, if Rick can freeze time on a whole planet, can't he just freeze time in places he doesn't like, like the Galactic Federation headquarters or the Citadel? Problem solved! All right, listen, you two. We froze time for a pretty long time, so when I unfreeze it, the world's time is gonna be fine, but our time's gonna need a little time to, you know, stabilize. Our time is gonna be unstable? Number one, infinite dimensions. The outside world is our enemy, Morty. We're the only <coughs> friends we've got, Morty. It's just Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty and their adventures, Morty. Rick and Morty forever and forever, 100 years, Rick and Morty some things. The show is built on the idea of infinite parallel universes. But if there are infinite dimensions slash timelines, that means literally every conceivable dimension is true at once, including one where something, a creature, an event, a person, a fart from a housefly, who cares, all are possible because of infinity, 
destroys all dimensions. It's fine. Everything is fine. There's an infinite number of realities, Morty. And in a few dozen of those, I got lucky and turned everything back to normal. I just had to find one of those realities in which we also happen to both die around this time. Speaking of dimensions, if Rick hates the Galactic Federation so much, why not go to a reality where they don't exist? In 1998, they had this promotion for the Disney film Mulan, where they, where they, they, they created a new sauce for the McNuggets called Szechuan Sauce, and it's delicious. And then they got rid of it. And now it's gone. This is the only place we're going to be able to try it is in my memory. Why not go where there's Szechuan sauce? The Citadel mentions the central finite curve, suggesting there are finite realities within the infinite. But that sounds like a lot of yada yada science. Something is either infinite or it's not. He is the one true Morty! Hooray! The one true Morty! Hey, keep it down! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.